All right, now, before we begin, let's all take one big cleansing deep breath. I am so excited to talk about this. And I'm so excited to talk about this message today because I am currently living what I'm preaching about. I can't wait to share it with you. So where are we gonna start? We're gonna start here. We're gonna start by saying, where are you in your parenting journey? Where are you at? Let's just take a little pulse check here. Let's check in and think, how are things going? I want you to think about the things that feel easy. And now I want you to think about the things that feel hard. And on a scale of one to 10, where are you at? If we're leaning more towards a one, we're feeling more like a thunderstorm. Maybe the skies are dark. Maybe there's lots of lightning bolts. You know, those feelings of walking on eggshells, feeling of defense and, and fear. Or are we at a 10? Are we sunny, confident, calm? Are things feeling easy and in flow? So when you think about that, when you think about the good times and when you're thinking about the challenging times, on a scale of one to 10, where do you land? Today, in just a little bit, we're gonna do an, an exercise that will help bring awareness. If you have been a member of this community, then you know that I love to talk about the three phases to this work is the first phase is awareness, the second phase is education, and the third phase is practice. And the mistake I see many make is that we want to just jump to practice. Just tell me what to do and I'll go and do it. And why that's a mistake is because if we don't have new education, if we don't have the new tools, then we're just going to be wasting time spinning our wheels, practicing the same thing over and over again. And how we learn what tools we need to practice and what tools we need to learn is we have to bring awareness to the tools that are no longer serving us. So that's what we're going to do together today is bring awareness to ask some pretty big questions and do some pretty big work together. And this work is designed to help you align to your personal values, to help you show up in ways that feel good, that feels like you're investing effort in the right spaces, like you're beginning to make the right decisions and the right choices because personal values are going to become the guiding principles that dictate your behavior and your actions. A mistake that many of us make is that we don't prioritize the time to identify what our personal values are. Personal values are something that I live on. I have be kind literally tattooed on my body because that is my bench, my, my bench, benchmark, my benchmark guiding principle, personal value. <laughs> as big and bold as I can say, that's the one value that I live my life in. Am I being kind to myself, to my family, to my community? And that allows me to make these decisions and dictates my behavior and it starts to guide my actions. It helps put purpose to the challenging moments as long as I'm working in alignment to being kind. I have brought awareness to kindness, I've done education on kindness, and now I, I put kindness to the practice. Because when we are rooted and when we are grounded in our values, making decisions become simple it becomes almost black and white. Is this kind, yes or no? Am I practicing patience, yes or no? Am I practicing connection, yes or no? It does not mean that it's easy all the time. It does not mean that it's not without struggle. It doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect the first time. 
but when we're grounded in those values, then it puts purpose to those thunderstorm days, knowing we have the right steps and we're on the right path to get back to that sunshine. It puts value in the work of navigating through the storm, not avoiding the storm, not denying the storm, not undervaluing the storm. It puts purpose on getting through the storm. Those uncomfortable feelings and emotions like anger, annoyance, and guilt, they become processed quicker because we're starting to tune in that when we are in alignment, we are checked into feeling good. We are checked into feeling uh, proud of ourselves. We are checked into integrity, joy. And when we are out of alignment, that's when the resistance comes in. That's when we start to feel anger, resentment, annoyance. And those emotions have purpose. They are purpose saying, hey, unmet need. Let's talk about it. Let's get us back on track so that we can start to feel back in alignment. And the faster we can clue into those moments, the faster we can do the work to get back in alignment so that we are able to stand confident in our decisions. So that when people in front of us are challenging us, when we are being faced with criticisms or when we're faced with judgment, we're faced with an opposing perspective or opinion, we are able to stand confident in our decisions. So how we can think about this outside of a parenting lens before we bring it into a parenting lens is think about a brand, think about any brand, a brand like the clothes you wear or even the grocery store you go to, those brands all will have values. And their values will be displayed in things like their mission statement and their vision statement. That's why brands do it, to help communicate the mission of the company, the vision of the company. And then those mission and visions help guide to the decisions that that company is going to make. When a business is working in alignment to those decisions, then we can begin to trust that brand. When brands start to work out of alignment to those mission and vision statements, then they start to lose trust. That's when we're like, mm, they say this, but that's not really what I'm seeing. You know, they say that, that this happens, but I don't really see it. I don't really feel it. Which then starts to, again, make decisions easy. We now have a very clear answer. It's a very yes or no answer. And like I said, this helps build trust. If you go to a store like Whole Foods, you know why you're shopping there because you are connected to the Whole Foods mission and vision. You have shared values. If you choose to shop at Trader Joe's, you have bought into Trader Joe's mission and vision. If you shop at the local farmer's market, it's because you are now connected to the mission and the vision. You're shopping and spending in alignment to your values. And if someone says to you, you know, why are you shopping at a farmer's market? I would never shop at a farmer's market. <laughs> you know, you can, we can say, oh, I understand. That's your, that's your point of view. I value it. And it's okay that you don't value it. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that we have different values. Brands and businesses begin to lose trust when they start to operate outside of their values. Imagine showing up to the farmer's market and all it was was pre-packaged foods that they bought from a distributor and then they were trying to pass it off as their own. It'd be like, hmm, something's not right here, right? We would start to clue in. We'd start to get that feeling of like, hmm, I don't know, something's not right here. 
you know, I have a friend, Sarah, and she um, is a farmer and she, she gives what I learned as farm tours. Imagine having, going to a farmer's market and learning that the butcher that you're purchasing from is actually outsourcing that. How would we feel buying from them? Or would we want to buy from someone else, someone who is more in alignment with our values? The same can be true for families. Just like the CEO of a brand creates the mission value and vision statements for the brand, you are the CEO of your family and you are creating the mission and vision statements for your family. And values, just like a brand's values are shown, felt and lived, your family's values, your values are shown, felt and lived. Not just told. The work that I do with parents is to get them below the surface to start examining their values, start examining ways that they are working in alignment or out of alignment with their values. And then, then the opportunity becomes that there needs to be a decision. Either their values need to change or their decision making needs to change. If we are saying we value patience, and we are not practicing moments of strengthening patience, then we're working out of alignment. So either we need to release that we are not valuing patience, or we need to start making different decisions to value patience and to strengthen and practice patience. I see far too much stress and struggle living out of alignment because we think we should be doing something but it's really that we're not valuing it. We're not, we don't even have an, uh, an important, a stake of importance into it. It's just something that we think that we should have to do. And then that creates a lot of tension. It creates a lot of feelings of resentment and it feels misaligned. For example, when parents ask me, what do you wish every parent would teach their child? This is a question that was actually asked a couple months ago inside of this community. And I think the common answer, right, is, well, I, I think that they should teach them letters, numbers, and colors, right? That's the most important thing to learn. And if I were to give you that answer, that would be out of alignment to my values, because I do not believe that. I actually believe that parents should teach children foundation skills over details. And what I mean by foundational skills, it means skills of self-awareness, skills of self-control, skills of empathy, compassion, social skills, communication skills, over academic details. Foundation over details. I have trust that details will always come, the intellect will always come, we can always learn, when we've invested in helping to build and reinforce in a solid foundation. And I can make that claim, I can, I can state that belief very confidently because I, again, value making long-term investments in relationships and I value personal growth. So it makes it very clear for me if a parent says, my child's not able to sit in school, but I wish that he could learn his letters. Where should we start? I will always say, let's get them sitting in their, in, in their chair. Or let's get them feeling confident to attend to the task. Let's do some work there. Because once the foundation is set, then the details, I have no, uh, I have no doubt, that's the word I was looking for, I have no doubt that the details and decorations will come because learning is a lifelong event. The second opportunity for me personally to start displaying how this work is, is when I make a mistake, when I mess up, when I work out of alignment, when, when there's um, something that happens and I'm like, oh gosh, that sucks. 
when I mess up, what I per do personally is I work to quickly acknowledge and repair the rupture. As soon as I have awareness that the rupture happened, then I work to repair the rupture. And now I do that by working to stay transparent, by working to be honest in my communication, by working to state and hold space and take accountability and apologize and then work to not make the same mistake in the future. And I do that because I value integrity. I value walking in alignment to integrity. So it's not about avoiding the mistake, it's about learning and navigating through it with transparency. So those are just two examples of me having an opportunity, having a situation, and then working through it to make decisions that are in alignment to my values. And so now I ask you again, what are your personal values? When you think about your guiding posts in life that help navigate your decisions and your behavior and your actions, what values are those moments tethered to? And if this is a new process for you, if this is something that feels like, mm, I don't know, Megan, I've never even thought about this. Well, this is where our exercise comes into play and we're gonna do it together. And I'm gonna guide you through a couple questions and guide you through an exercise. So I invite you to go slow, to pause this as needed, but to really put pen to paper and start doing the work of flushing some of these values out. And don't worry, these values, they may evolve and change as your life perspective change, as your situation and circumstances change, your values might change and evolve and that's totally okay. But this is just a starting point, all right? So here's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna think about the people in your life who inspire you. Now, I want you to think of people in your inner circle who inspire you. I want you to think about influencers who inspire you. I want you to think about um, teachers who have inspired you, public figures that inspire you, even fictional characters that inspire you. And I invite you to think about three to five of these people. And just write them, write their names down. For me, I feel like Brene Brown would be on that list. I feel like Dan Siegel would be on that list. I feel like my husband would be on that list. I feel like inner child Megan would be on that list. And I feel like children, just the, the collective being of children <laughs> would be on my list. If you feel up to it, share with me who would be on your list. I'm curious. You can let me know. All right. If you have your list of five people, now I invite you to write down the characteristics and the traits that these people in your life, what do they display that you are inspired by? Like why, why do you feel inspired by them? And write them down. So for example, I would say Brene Brown, she's funny, she's witty, she has uh, a propensity to, to deliver really harsh truths, but in really kind, soft ways. And I feel inspired by that. I feel inspired by her vulnerability, by her public speaking, by her energy. Dan Siegel's intellect, inspires me, the way that he's able to communicate. I love it when he is uh, talking about theories and he talks through theories um, in a way that is like, well, it's okay that they don't see it how I see it. This is why I see it. I think that that is just so you know, badass and I just am so inspired by that. Other people I am inspired by the way they show up in the world, the work that they do, 
interpersonal work that they do, the relationship work that they do, the way that children stick up for themselves and are so dedicated and, and put themselves first, I admire that. This is just me brainstorming off the cuff, but I, I'm curious, what traits would you say come up for you? For your three to five people, and I invite you to write them down. After you do that, I invite you to circle the top five qualities that you want more of. I just took a deep breath. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know what Megan wants more of? Megan wants more bravery. Megan wants more public speaking. Megan wants more, uh, more dedication to self. Megan feels inspired by her inner child's fire. I want more fire in my life. And quiet firmness is, I guess, what I would say about that. Those are the traits that I would say out of my, my three to five people who influence me, those are the five qualities that, that I, in my life, with, that I want more of. And now here's the hard part. Here's where we're going to come and see ourselves in the mirror. Because we're going to take those five traits that we just circled, and we're going to score ourselves. So on a scale of one to 10, how do we land personally in those five traits? For me, I would rate myself, um, I would say probably like a, a five in bravery. Sometimes I feel like when things get, when the message gets really big, I kind of like shy down or talk around it or over explain it. And I just wanna get very more clear and more concise. So right now I'd say I'm at a five. As of public speaking, sometimes I feel like I, I am constantly saying like, oh, does that make sense? You know, <laughs> those, are, those are things that I personally want to improve. In values of the fire, I feel like it's coming back, but I feel for a long time I, I would make myself small to fit in and I'm starting to gain more confidence in that. But right now in my fire department, I, I would say probably like mm, a two, three. Standing up for myself a two, three, sometimes four or five on my good days, but on average, two, three. And the hard part about this is what my mentor said to me the first time I did this exercise was, you can lie to yourself, right? You can, you can inflate the numbers But then would that really serve the purpose of where we're going? Would that serve the purpose to inflate the numbers so that you just feel better about them? Is that walking in alignment to bringing more of them into your life? And I thought, dang, call me out, be accountable. <laughs> I actually think the way that he said it was, you can lie to me, but you can't lie to yourself. And I was like, dang. Ugh. It's that invitation to sit with you. But I think that that's a powerful invitation to sit with you. Because you are the person who gets to decide. You are the person who gets to invest. And when I think about it that way, then, I, then I'm excited. It puts purpose to everything. So as you sit with this list now, I want to ask you, how does it feel to you, right? When we sit at, and we see these values and we see where we're scoring ourselves and we, we are committed, we're saying, hey, we will actually want more of this in my life. How does that feel to you? What would it feel like to be in the 910 range of these qualities? If I was to feel brave, at like 9, 10, I'd be like, dang, Megan, you're unstoppable. Way to go. Way to go sitting in the moments where you're not feeling brave and practicing initiating bravery. Right? Because you have to think about the times that bravery is needed are the times 
that's challenging the bravery that maybe I'm starting to feel scared. That's the time to start to lean into bravery. And then think about like, what would that feel like to start practicing, strengthening, investing in the value of bravery? It starts to make the decisions very clear. How easy would it be for you to make decisions if you were connected strongly to your values? I just said it, it would become very easy. If someone asked me to do something and I was like, oh gosh, I feel so scared to do that. Then I'd be like, whoa, wait a second, hold on. Right now it's a time to practice bravery. And I'm like, okay, I can do it. I can do this because I'm practicing bravery. I'm connecting my action and my behavior to my value. Now I know that where I'm making the investments and why I'm making the investments. The last question I'm gonna ask is what would change for your family if you began to model living in alignment with your own values. I think that's a powerful space to sit in and think of the opportunities and think of the growth and think of the, the potential. Think about if you just practice your values for the next week, what could change? And then think about extending that out to a month, to three months, to six months, to a year, to 20 years. I am often told that I am a very patient person. My husband used to say, well, you're just a patient person. And I used to like have to fight for it and be like, uh, no, I'm not. Actually, I'm a very impatient person. I have just practiced and strengthened my patient's muscles. So I know when I'm in a moment of frustration, that's a moment to practice and strengthen my patients. And I will do the work in that moment so that I can live into the value of being a patient person. That way I can stay in alignment to my values. So I end you with this. I invite you to check in throughout the day to ask yourself, Am I getting closer to living in alignment with the values that I want for myself, the values I want for my family, and the values I want for my community? Because when we are connected deeply and grounded firmly with our values, then the decisions and the struggles and the opportunities that, bec that become in front of us, we're able to make decisions to go through them. So that on the other side, we know that we're strengthening, standing firmly in our own values. And if you're doing that work, I want you to know that I am proud of you. And I hope you know that it is something that you should be proud of yourself for. Because that means that you're doing the hard work.